Hi guys, thanks for tuning in to another video on ForgottenWeapons.com. I'm Ian, I'm here today at the James D. Julia Auction House. I'm taking a look at some of the guns that they are going to be selling in their upcoming October of 2016 firearms auction. And this one that we're looking at today is not a broom handle Mauser. It is in fact an Astra model of 900, although they were designed deliberately to look and function very much like the broom handle Mauser. So this holds 10 rounds, it's a semi-auto pistol, short recoil operated. Uh, it's chambered for the 763 Mauser cartridge, which is all the same as the C96 broom handle Mauser. And the backstory to this pistol really is about China. Now, in the 1920s and 30s, there was a lot of civil unrest and civil war and fighting in China, um, enough so that there was actually an international embargo set in place that prohibited military arms from being imported from other countries into China. However, the specific terminology of the embargo and Boy, specific terminology is always critically important in this sort of thing. Well, it exempted pistols. Pistols weren't considered military firearms, even if they happened to be fully automatic pistols with shoulder stocks. Now, initially, these were not full auto, but the Mauser company in the 20s and 30s imported something on the order of 400,000 C96 pistols into China. These were guns that because they had a relatively long barrel, they were semi-automatic, you could fit a shoulder stock to them, they were used as de facto rifles by a lot of fighters in China, and they came to be uh, very highly regarded. Uh, in fact, the Chinese colloquial name for these guns is the box cannon, because it's got a big box magazine out in front, they're big compared to normal handguns, and they were impressive, and they offered a lot of firepower if you were restricted from having actual rifles. In fact, even if your alternative was a bolt-action rifle, you might well choose something like this instead and get the semi-automatic firepower and double the magazine capacity and not worry about the reduction in effective range from using a pistol cartridge. Now, Astra was not the first company to see Mauser making all these sales and start to think about that. Uh, two other Spanish companies actually got into the Chinese market first, those being Star and a company named Vestigui Hermanos. Uh, both of these guys were also saw this and started selling stocked pistols into China. Uh, for Star, it was their Model A pistol, which looks much like a 1911, and they'd put a stock on it. And Vestigui actually manufactured a, a gun similar to the Astra here, basically a functional copy of the, uh, the Broomhandle Mauser. They were very successful. Astra wanted to get in on this business, and so in 1927, they sent a sales representative to the area. Now, you, in companies doing this business into China, didn't actually sell directly to China. What they typically did was sell to Japanese wholesalers who would then resell guns into China. The Japanese companies uh, had a much closer cultural relationship to China. It, was very, it would be very difficult for a Spanish company to suddenly, in the 1920s, decide to sell into China. Well, for starters, they need someone who speaks Chinese. They need correspondence. They don't have email. They don't have the internet. They can't just, you know, punch up google.ch and find out where people are buying guns in China. So Japan had ties to the Western world, and Japan had ties to China, and Japan made a good intermediary. So what Astra did is they sent their representative uh, to Japan, and he started negotiating with Japanese uh, resellers, and actually did very well, arranged for a lot of good contracts. Uh, he wrote back and told Astra to absolutely work on this project, because this was something that they'd had on the drawing board, and they weren't really sure if it was going to be an effective commercial product or not. Well, he saw the situation in China. He said, absolutely, we can sell a lot of those. So by the very end of 1927, the first couple of prototypes of the Astra 900 were manufactured. And by 1928, the gun was in full-on production. Now, they manufactured a number of different versions of this pistol. This is the Model 900, which is semi-automatic, has a 10-round magazine and a shoulder stock attachment. Pretty basic, very much like the broom handle Mauser. They would go on to introduce the, uh, by the 1930s, they had the Models 901 and 902, which added more firepower. These added selector switches, so they were capable of full auto fire. The 901 was this pistol with a full auto selector switch. As you can imagine, that's a little bit impractical, because you only have 10 rounds, and these fired at about 900 rounds a minute, so you got about a second, less than a second actually, of full auto fire before the gun's empty. So the Model 902 
improved that a bit by adding a, a second 10 round extension to the magazine. So you had a, a fixed 20 round magazine with a full auto switch, that was better. The 903 was better still, the 903 used detachable box magazines, so now you can reload much more easily than using stripper clips, especially for a full 20 round magazine. So interestingly, uh, Astra opted to make the 903 magazine a proprietary magazine design, where their competitors, Bestigui Hermanos, who made the Azul uh, brand name pistol, also used detachable magazines, but Bestigui copied the, Ma the Mauser broom handle magazine. Mauser at this point had released the Mauser Schnellfeuer, full auto with detachable magazines, and um, having your magazine interchangeable with those made a lot of sense. Uh, Astra didn't do that. Then Astra had the model 904, which, and every one of these gets a little bit more practical and better. The 904 added a rate reducing mechanism. So now, instead of firing at 900 rounds a minute, you could turn that all the way down to 350 rounds a minute, which allowed the ammo to last a lot longer, uh, made the guns more controllable, with a definite advantage. So these guns were intended, where they were designed to be sold in China, and a large number of them were. Between 1928 and 1931, about 13,600 of the Model 900 were sent to China. Uh, in total, by the late 1930s, they would have manufactured uh, about 34,000 of these pistols of all types, from the 900 through the Model F. And of those, about 21,000 were this semi-automatic Model 900 type. All of the guns came with shoulder stocks. It's kind of interesting in that it wasn't simply a factory option, it was the default. When you bought a 900, it came with a stock. Now this particular one, we can check the serial number, and we know that this one was actually a very early manufacturer. Serial number's in the 2400 range. It would have been made in the winter of 1928, and Astra's shipping records record that this pistol was sent to Antwerp uh, through the Astra China Company. So Astra had set up a, a transit company in Antwerp, because Antwerp was the, the simplest, most effective port to use. The closest port to Astra would have been Bilbao in Portugal, but ships from Bilbao to Japan only departed something like once or twice a month, whereas there was a pretty regular shipping trade between Antwerp and Japan. Um, a lot of the Japanese foreign trade companies were based in Antwerp, or that was their European base. So Astra's pistols for China were shipped through Antwerp, and we know that this is one of those pistols that did go to China. So most of those guns came back in rather poor condition, uh, same with the broom handle Mausers that went to China. Those guns got used very heavily. This one is actually in very nice shape. Now it's, it has been refinished, uh, but it's a really pretty gun. And the way that the Aster was built and its disassembly techniques are a bit different than the Mauser. So why don't we go ahead and take a closer look at this. Take it apart, I can show you exactly how it works inside and some of the neat features of the Model 900. So like the Mauser, this shoulder stock is not just a shoulder stock, it is also a holster, which you can wear on your belt. We have a button here on the side, which opens the top door of this holster stock combination. Slide the pistol out, close the door. Now this particular stock is actually a Mauser stock that has been converted to fit this pistol and the, the lug has been serialized to this pistol. Um, but this was originally a Mauser stock that's been converted. Um, but obviously just the fact that you can do that conversion suggests that the stocks are very similar. Um, in detail they differ, in form they are identical, they work the same way. And we have a slot on the back of the pistol's grip, which that stock slides into. And there you go. So most of these pistols have been exempted uh, from NFA regulation, they're not considered short-barreled rifles because their value is derived primarily from collectible purposes. If you would like to see a complete list of which guns are exempt in that way, take a look at the ATF's Curio and Relic uh, source book online, it's an easy file to find, and it lists uh, not just what guns are Curio and Relic eligible, but which guns are exempt from the NFA under various uh, sections. So we will dispense with the stock for the moment, take a look at the gun itself. An easy way to visually distinguish the Astra from the Mauser series of pistols at a glance is to look for these pins. The Mauser does not have any pins that come through the side plate, and the Astra does, so that's simple. Of course, if you look closer, you can see the markings. Obviously, being marked Astra automatic pistol is a good giveaway that it's not a Mauser. Uh, caliber is 7.63. Some of the very early guns were actually marked 
uh, Patron and Mauser, or Mauser Caliber, uh, as a marketing gimmick, although that was dropped fairly quickly. This, as I said, is an early gun. Uh, the serial number right down here is 2437. Uh, when they got a little later into production, they would actually have a three-line address that would have an Astra marking, and it would have, a, have some patent information, and it would mark the, the location, the origin of the, the gun. And in fact, some of these that were sent to China, uh, they actually added some Chinese characters to uh, indicate that they were made in Spain. Interestingly, I guess the, my, my understanding is the literal translation of those characters was made in Sun Country, which yeah, I can see how that applies to Spain. So in order to start the disassembly, I need to push this pin out, and I can only do that if I put the safety in the disassembly position. Disassembly is the safety lined up with this notch in the side plate. So I put that there, and then I push on this pin. I can push it out the left side. I need to push a little farther. I'm going to use a, cart a dummy cartridge here as a tool to do that. There we go. That pin just comes right out. Then this side plate is going to slide off the back of the gun. Just a little gentle pressure there. And now this one is full of grease, but you can also see this really nice, cool looking jeweled finish to the inside. You can imagine how a salesman in 1929, 1928, 1930 can uh, demonstrate this, this simple disassembly step compared to a Mauser to a, a client who may not be the world's most renowned firearms expert, and they're going to ooh and ah and Boy, isn't that pretty, and you've got all the working bits inside there. Very cool. That, was, that, I'm sure, was a great sales tactic for Astra. Once this is out, we can then remove the slide by removing this pin. That pin also slides out to the left side of the gun. Because it is captive under the side plate, it doesn't come out until you've taken the side plate off. So I have access to it here. I'm going to push the slide back just slightly, and then cock the hammer, that'll make this easier. There we go. Once I take tension off the slide, we can push that pin out. That comes out. And then the slide just lifts right off the top of the gun. And we've got our follower here, which has also sprung up and out. Like the Mauser, that's a 10-round fixed magazine fed by stripper clips. You'll notice the Astra has a much stronger uh, assist spring here for pushing the slide back into battery. That's heftier than on a Mauser, which is a nice added feature. And as I mentioned, this gun is totally full of packing grease, and I'm not going to go in there and take it all out. It certainly doesn't hurt it to have it in there. Uh, make sure that the gun's all nicely preserved. So that's why it looks gunky, as it's full of preservative. Now we have the slide assembly. This disassembles the same way as the slide on a Mauser, namely you take this plug out, well first you take the firing pin, then you take this plug out, and then the bolt comes out. The plug's kind of a pain in the rear to reassemble, and there isn't a whole lot to show you by doing that. It's just the bolt is this square block inside. What's really going on here we can see without removing the bolt, so I'm not going to. You can see a pair of lugs down there on the bolt itself, and then we have a matching pair of lugs on this locking block. And the way now the way this works is that the locking block cycles up and down, just enough for these lugs to engage and disengage. You can actually think of this kind of like a Browning 1911 pistol, where the lugs are on the barrel instead of on the bolt. So when this gun is fully in battery and the slides forward, this block is pushed up. What that does is lock the bolt into the bolt carrier. When the gun fires, this whole assembly recoils together because the bolt can't open and a cam pulls this down, just enough to unlock the bolt. Once the bolt is unlocked, then it can travel freely. So this whole, si whole uh, bolt carrier and bolt cycle backwards together for a short distance, just a couple of millimeters. That unlocks the bolt. Then inertia pulls the bolt backwards and allow it to e eject an empty case and chamber a new one. That's how the gun works, and uh, that gives you just enough delay to open safely with the 7.63 Mauser cartridge. You'll notice here this uh, tangent sight on the back, optimistically marked out to 1,000 meters, which, well, uh, okay, I don't think you're hitting at 1,000 meters, even with a shoulder stock, but some of those closer ranges are feasible with a stock. You could certainly get out to 150, 200, maybe even 250 yards with this. 
Um, that's going to be more harassing fire than target shooting at that distance. But yeah, if you've got the capability, why not? So all in all, this turned out to be a very successful pistol for Astra. Uh, obviously, they still exist to this day. They're still good guns. Uh, Astra made almost 35,000 of them, and that's not really anything to sneer at. They were used all the way up through World War II. Um, in fact, when the Germans were occupying France, they bought about 3,000 Astra pistols, including about 1,000 of the Model 900s, as well as some of the full-auto varieties. Those were, there's a delivery in 1940 and another delivery in 1943, um, you know, just across the border, France to Spain. So quite a long service life for these guns, and this is a, a cool example of one. It should shoot very nicely for someone. Uh, like I said, it came back from China. It's been refinished, but it's been refinished tastefully and well, and it's, uh, it's a good example of the type. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. I certainly like looking at the guns that aren't necessarily what they appear to be at first, and the Astra 900 falls into that category for most people who expect it to be a Mauser. So if you'd like to own this yourself, uh, add it to your Mauser collection. Just enjoy it as it is. It's, it's a great shooting little pistol. Well, take a look at the description text below. You'll find a link there to the James Julia catalog page on this pistol. You can check out their pictures and description and place a bid on the phone or come up here live to the auction and participate yourself. Thanks for watching.